Hey, I'm Jonathan from AJ and Smart, and in this video, you're gonna learn the perfect one hour problem solving and decision making workshop that you can run for teams of any size. It's a really killer workshop. You can really use it for anything. In this video, I'm gonna give you this step-by-step -step guide on exactly how to run LDJ, one of the most powerful workshops you can ever use for almost any problem-solving scenario. It's super, super flexible, and I really, really hope you love it. Before I get started, just to let you know, you can get this booklet down below. There'll be a link so you can download it, so you'll have a step-by-step -step guide as well that you can print out if you wanna have that in the workshop. But like I said, you can use me right now as your facilitator to run you through this exercise step-by-step. -step. All right, let's dive right into it. So what is Lightning Decision Jam? Let me just put it up on the board and give you some examples of how you can use this, what it is, where it came from and all that before we jump in to the actual workshop. And down below in the description, if you already know what LDJ is, if you already know everything about it, then down in the description, you'll see like a timestamp where to skip to if you just wanna go straight to the workshop. All right, so Lightning Decision Jam. So that's the name of the workshop. You can also call it LDJ. <laughs> LDJ is about, you know, a three year old workshop that we came up with at AJ and Smart as a very quick way to help teams solve problems and make decisions. And that's the two main things that you'll be doing with this workshop. So the main things you'll be doing are solving problems and making decisions. But within that, you'll also be doing a lot of the things that most workshops kind of require. So you're gonna be also doing brainstorming. You're gonna be doing, you're also gonna be doing idea prioritization. You're gonna be doing problem finding. and a lot of other things that you're gonna to need to bring a team together and make decisions fast. The workshop lasts about one hour and you can do it for up to seven to eight people at one table. You can also have like hundreds of people in the room, but try to keep it to like seven to 10 people per table. But you can have one facilitator facilitating an entire room. For example, if you're doing like an innovation hackathon or something like that. So like I said, this video is gonna be me running you and your teams through this. So feel free to use me as the facilitator. So I wanna tell you about the supplies you're gonna need for this workshop. Number one, get yourself a big chunky timer. This is a time timer. Something that the team can see so that they can see just how much time is left in each exercise, okay? In this video, we're not going to do every exercise in real time because then it would take a full hour. This video would be an hour. So you'll be pausing as the exercises start. So do have a timer like this. So when I tell you to set a timer for 10 minutes, you can just do that and the whole team can see it. So that's the first thing. And this is a time timer. Next thing, give everybody a Sharpie or a different sort of thick marker so that they can't write in detail, but you can see really clearly what everyone's writing. So I wouldn't go for a thin pen. I would go for a marker with this sort of thickness. Next, two different colors of sticky notes. We're using post-its here. You use whatever you want. These are square. Next, get yourself some rectangular sticky notes. Finally, get yourself two different colors of voting dots. And the last thing you'll need really is just some sort of uh, space like this, like this flip chart or a whiteboard to stick things onto. So I usually recommend like a, just a, a wall, doesn't really matter, okay? So just a space to stick stuff onto. If you don't have a whiteboard, then I really would recommend one more thing. And that is magic paper, because magic paper is this like adhesive paper that can stick to anything and turn anything into a whiteboard. So I could stick this on. A... <laughs> so I can, you can stick this onto anything and it turns into a whiteboard basically. So this is adhesive paper. Um, on Amazon, it's called magic paper. There's probably other brands, but this is the one we use. It's great stuff. I always bring it with me when I'm doing a workshop. Now you just need one more thing before jumping into the workshop, and that's a broad challenge. And I'm gonna give you an example of a couple of broad challenges 
before we actually go into the workshop. So we don't wanna go into this workshop completely empty handed, even though you could. So you could go into this workshop if you're just doing like a team bonding experience and there's no real specific topic, you could use this as a retrospective, but it's usually super helpful if you have something that the team can work on. And so, for example, you could say, okay, so guys, you know, we're, we're, we're having uh, some problems with uh, collaboration in our company or teamwork or the office environment or, you know, how we build products or our processes or something like that. It can be something extremely general, but what you need to do, what's great before this workshop starts is to turn that super general kind of challenge or problem into what we call a how might we statement. And this how might we statement is just a way to phrase a challenge as an opportunity. Let me give you a really clear example of how that looks. Okay, so let's say I'm just gonna write a few like broad kind of things you might wanna work on in this workshop on the left hand side. I'm gonna show you how to turn those into a how might we statement. And every team should just have one how might we statement to work on. And often when we're doing a big mass workshop, everyone in the room, every team is still just working on one thing. So here's a couple of examples. So um, people think the office is too noisy. Uh, uh, collaboration isn't working. It takes too long to make products at this company. To launch products. Another one might be, we want to make the office environment a bit cooler. Literally, that might be one. Okay, so these, you could start with just these, but it's better if you turn them into how might we statements, it's easier to work on. So let me show you how you would turn these into how might we statements. It's super, super simple. The office is too noisy. What would that be as a how might we? What I would say is if the office, if the problem is the office is too noisy, I would change that into something positive and broad, like how might we make the office a better place to work in? So office is too noisy. How might we make the office a better place to work in? I'll just do one more, okay? So, it takes too long to launch products at this company. What would you say the how might we for that might be? How might we produce the best things to products? Yeah, how might we launch products faster? Okay, so there you go. So let's just choose one of these to make it very simple. And let's just say that for this workshop that you're gonna do, and, and, and it doesn't really matter, you're gonna choose your own how might we if you're using this as sort of a guided facilitation, but I'm going to use this first one as an example just when I'm doing these exercises. So I'm gonna be working on the office is too noisy, so I'm gonna be working on how might we make the office a better place to work in, okay? So that's what I'm gonna be focusing on. How might we make the office a better place to work in? Okay, so let's actually now, you, you've got everything you need to actually do the workshop. So from this point on, we're gonna be running through the workshop step by step, and I'll be occasionally referring to this booklet, which you'll also have access to down in the description. Um, and of, you know, we gotta say it. If this video, if this is something that you find helpful, if you wanna see more things like this, do let us know in the comments. If you have any questions about LDJ, let us know in the comments and we will answer your questions. All right, let's go. So the first thing you're gonna do is remind your team, hey, this is the challenge we're working on. So if you're working on the office is too noisy, I would say, hey, everybody, the challenge we're working on today is that the office is too noisy. I've rephrased it into an opportunity statement, which is, how might we make this office a better place to work in? That's what we're focusing on. How might we make this office a better place to work in? So that's the thing that you'll need to tell your teams before they're guided through. So what is it they're actually working on, right? If you didn't choose a topic and it's just like, let's see what comes out of it, that's fine. But generally it's helpful if you start with how might we and just tell them what the challenge is. Okay, so the first exercise is called the sailboat and it's 10 minutes long and it's super, super simple. So the, the, the very start of this exercise, what I'm gonna need someone on the team to do is literally draw a sailboat. So essentially, I need someone to draw something that looks like, this pen is running out of ink, it's getting a little unsatisfying. 
That's supposed to be an anchor. Um, okay, so what you need to draw is a sailboat with a sail and an anchor. That's a really bad anchor. I've drawn a terrible anchor here. And some water. That's it, okay? You just draw it on a whiteboard, on a piece of paper, but big enough so that there's actually enough space. And step one is start with the things that are working. So the first thing you're gonna do is give everybody a block of sticky notes and give everybody four minutes to write what is working well. So what are the positives when it comes to the challenge that we're working on today? So if we're working on how might we make this office a better place to work, the first thing we want to do is ask everyone to silently, without talking, one post-it at a time, write down what is working well. So what are the things, even though we know this is a challenge, what are first of all the things that are actually moving us forward? What are things that are working well at this company? Let me give you some examples for the office environment challenge. So if I was thinking, hey, what's working well? I have to write as many of these as possible in four minutes. So what I'm gonna write, and, and remember, one thing per post-it. So everyone on the team is writing these completely alone. So first thing I'm gonna write is, well, open kitchen is really cool. Okay, so that's something that I like about the office. We have great natural light here. And on and on and on and on for four minutes until I have, you know, up maybe 10 or three or four, it doesn't even matter. Just until I have a bunch of these positive things. Now, once the four minutes is up, what we're gonna do is that each person on the team is going to spend one to two minutes sticking up their post-its, so one person at a time, sticking up their post-its on the top of the sailboat and telling the team what they wrote. So this is how that's gonna look. Okay, I think the open kitchen is really cool. No discussion, I just say the thing I've written. I think we've got great natural light in this office and then everyone does it and they're all stuck up on the top of the sailboat. And what does that do? It just gets people warmed up. It gives you kind of a good vibe for how to actually do the, the next steps of the exercise, which are a bit more negative. So we're looking at what are the positive things when it comes to the challenge we're working on first, and that whole step should take 10 minutes. Let me recap what's actually gonna happen here. First, give everybody a block of post-its. Second, they get four minutes to write as many positive things as they can about the topic we're working on. Third, they're gonna stick these up on the board one person at a time and say the things but not discuss with anybody. And that's step one complete. Now the next step, we're gonna get a bit more negative. Everyone on the team still has their block of post-its and now we're asking them to write, okay, when it comes to this topic, and in this case, when it comes to the topic of making our office environment a better place to work. What's holding us back? What's bad? What's negative? And that's sort of what the representation of the anchor is here. So we're gonna ask everyone to take four minutes to write as many negative things as they can on a post-it. Again, they're anonymous, so nobody's talking to each other. You're doing this completely anonymously, and each person is writing as many as they can, one per post-it. Please watch your handwriting because you will not be presenting the next ideas to anybody on the team. These are completely anonymous to everybody. So the next step is very simple. Four minutes, write as many post-its as possible on the topic of what's holding us back. Let me give you some quick examples before you pause and go into the four minutes. Now, remember, we're not focusing on the noisiness of the office, but now someone's obviously gonna write that. I can't concentrate in the open area. Okay, that's something something someone might write. Hard to make sales calls. Okay, whatever. Um, internet, too slow. So this is not related anymore to the problem of the noise. People are just putting out the things that they really find that they have issues with and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we ask people to write as many as possible. Now, whereas in the previous step, we asked people to put them up one by one and talk about them. In this next step, everybody just randomly sticks up their post-its as quickly as possible, randomly, everyone at the same time, and you're left with a big bunch of blue post-its at the bottom or yellow post-its at the bottom. 
and they're all anonymous because you don't know everyone's handwriting, right? And you don't have time to think about that. So what you're doing in this exercise, the final step is just ask people, once they're done with the four minutes, to stick all of their post-its up at the bottom of the ship and just spread them out. Don't try to put them all together and don't try to cluster them right now either, right? You don't need to, if this is the same as this one, you don't need to cluster that right now. That's the next step, so don't worry about that. So all you're looking for is really to just you know, get all the positive things on the top, all the negative things on the bottom for the topic that you're working on. All right, let's move on to the next step. Okay, so the next step is you're gonna give everyone on your team three sticky voting dots. Doesn't matter which color, but just red is what we generally use. And you're going to give them three minutes to silently vote on which negative chat, forget the positives, they, those were just for giving a good vibe, but they're gonna focus on which things that are holding them back cause them the most irritation that they personally feel are subjectively the biggest challenges. So you're not asking everyone as a team to talk about which ones are the most tricky. You're asking, hey, vote on the things which you consider to be the most distressing, the most irritating. Now, what do we do about duplicates? We tell everyone on the team, when you see a duplicate, do not discuss it. Just take it and cover the other duplicate, okay? That's it, you're not discussing, it's not a big deal. You take it, cover the other duplicate, okay? And if there's a vote underneath here and two votes here, that's then gonna add up to three votes. So the, the people get really focused on the duplicate problem. Um, and when they get focused on the duplicate problem, I can tell that you're someone who's way too focused on the details and not focused on the whole point of the exercise. So don't get too into those issues. So you're asking people to vote. They have three votes. The voting rules are, yes, you can vote on your own. Yes, you can put two or three dots on one idea if you like, one challenge if you like, that's up to you. The whole point is this three minutes should be silent, right? People should not talk to each other. They should not discuss, you're silently voting. And once those three minutes are up, once everyone has gotten rid of their three dots, what you're gonna do, so we need someone on the table who's almost like the kind of co-facilitator. That person's just gonna take those votes and I'm, you know, in this example, if this has two dots and this has one dot, the facilitator at the table or the, the assistant at the table should just put them to the side in order of priority in terms of this one has the most votes, this one has the least votes. Super simple, we'll put an image up on the screen of how that should look when you have multiple things there. Actually, let's make it a bit more realistic for you. You'll probably have like something that looks like this, you know, I'm gonna put the dots on here to make it a bit more realistic. Um, something like this. Um, you'll have something up there. You might even have another one that has the same amount of votes up there and has four votes. So you have, you'll have something like this. Your prioritized list won't, won't look super neat. It'll look something like this. Now, what we're gonna do, because this LDJ exercise is all about speed, making decisions fast, we're going to just choose one thing to work on for now, and if your team has another hour later, you can choose the second thing to work on. So we have a super scientific method. If we're looking here, okay, so we have two things up at the top. We have two top voted challenges that we wanna work on. Their scientific method for choosing the right one is to choose the one on the left. And that's the end of this step. That's the end of step three. So, this team has decided that one of their biggest challenges is, remember we started with the office is too loud. Then we said, let's think about how we can actually improve the office space as, as just a, as a frame. And now we've gotten to the biggest voted pain point, and, it, and it's, it's, it's written in the words of your employees or your team, open plan office is not good for concentrated work. Okay, so that's what someone wrote. So the, for when you wanna do concentrated, like really focused work, the open plan office is not a perfect space for that, okay? So that's the challenge, or that's the negative thing that got voted up. And what we wanna do now as the, as the person on the team who's kind of taking charge of being the assistant facilitator, what I want you to do is simply turn that challenge, that negative point, into a how might we. And as we saw earlier, it's pretty simple to do that. You're just trying to say, okay, 
How do we make this into something we can work on? And if we're looking at the open plan office is not good for concentrated or quiet work, what we want to write then, and we're getting a bit more specific now, is how might we create an environment that supports concentrated work? This is what the team is calling it. That's what the team at AJ and Smart calls it. But let's maybe just call it something like, how might we create an environment that supports quiet work? Okay, this is a three minute job. You shouldn't spend more time on it than that. And what we've done, so you might think, okay, so now we're basically back to where we started. No, we started with office is too loud. Then we got everyone to just let everything out, let all the irritation out, also kind of share some positive things. And now we have gotten to the point where we're like, yeah, okay, so we need to find some way for the office to support quiet work. But often in these exercises, you go in a totally different, unexpected direction. I just wanted to keep it simple for this exercise. It could be that the internet is too slow was actually one of the biggest irritating points. So now we have a how might we that we're gonna work on. So we're gonna really create solutions for how might we create an environment that supports quiet work? So this is the thing you're gonna be focusing your team on. Just to be super clear, you're only generating one how might we, you're just creating one how might we for the top voted challenge. If you have extra time later, you can turn all of these challenges into how might we's and put them in a backlog for later LDJs. And then you can start the LDJ already at this point, if you're, if you're that clear that this is really the challenge. Right now you're just bringing one how might we forward to the next step. Okay, now we've got our second how might we of the day. So this how might we was generated in the LDJ workshop. Just to be super clear, the how might we you generated at the very start of the workshop is now no longer relevant. That was just to get things kickstarted. That was just to have a frame. This is now what we're 100% focusing on. So we're focusing on how might we create an environment that supports quiet work, and that just might be, you know, whatever that is for your team. That might be completely different from the frame at the start, and that's totally fine. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna give your team a different color of sticky note, just to make things exciting, okay? Just make things real exciting. And you're gonna give them six minutes to create as many solutions as they can think of for this challenge, okay? As many solutions, doesn't matter how stupid they are, doesn't matter how crazy they are, it's how might we create an environment that supports quiet work and we want them to write as many ideas as possible. Okay, so what could be some ideas? Again, it's, it's one per sticky note and it's completely anonymous. So what could be some ideas for something like this? Having designated quiet hours, Okay, maybe we uh, building on top of having designated quiet hours, I might write quiet Wednesdays. Why can't I spell quiet? Okay, look how I spelled quiet here. Quiet, uh, what else, what else would help? Do not disturb if wearing headphones. Another thing could be buying people who need it, noise canceling headphones. Okay, so that's just an example of a couple of ideas that people should write, but they should keep writing until the six minutes is up. And then at the end of it, just like you saw in the earlier step, you're gonna have everybody stand up and just quickly stick them all up randomly, no order, just spread them around, and now everyone's ideas are up on the board. There would be like 20 or 30 up here. I was just fixing my hair. So that's six minutes and all you're looking for is to have a pile of different ideas and you're gonna follow the previous procedure that you learned. Um, we're not going to deal with the duplicates right now. We'll deal with them in the next step. And that step is step six. Okay, we're on to step six. You're giving everybody six dots, six voting dots, and you're giving them six minutes this time to go and look at the ideas that are on the board, the ideas that are on the wall, and vote like they did before, vote on their own ideas if they want, put three dots on one idea if they think that's the best idea, but what they're voting on is what they subjectively feel like are the best solutions to this challenge, okay? Which could be the best answers 
to this challenge. So what they're doing, just like last time, is really just voting based on their own subjectivity. Now, what happens if they see a duplicate? What happens if someone sees that this one and this one are the same? What do they do? Uh, cluster them. Yeah, you just do this. Do this without talking, okay? So duplicates should be dealt with just by the people who are voting and notice that there's a duplicate. Just take it off and move it and do not have a big discussion. Someone right now who's pedantic in the back of the room might be asking, oh, well, what if they're not identical? Please stop thinking about these problems, okay? That's not the point of this exercise. The point of this exercise is to really quickly have a few solutions at the end. Doesn't matter if this one is a slight variation of this one. Stick them together, doesn't matter does not really affect the outcome of the end of the workshop. Why do I keep talking about this duplicate thing? Because in our comments, we always have people asking about the duplicates and getting really angry about it. And I'm just gonna tell you, you're a fool. Okay, so guess what? At the end of this exercise, you're gonna have something that looks a little bit like this. Let's do it again. So once again, you'll have your prioritized list of ideas. They mightn't look as neat as that. They'll be a big mess. And that's all you're trying to get to in the six minutes. You're just trying to get to this point where you have a prioritized list of interesting ideas or at least ideas that team, the team think are interesting and you're gonna run with those. Now, let me tell you something. If this had been a normal meeting, we would never have gotten to here in such a small amount of time because everyone would have been discussing, you wouldn't have been able to visualize these ideas. That's something we talk about a lot on this channel, the ability to just stay silent write your ideas, stick them up, stay anonymous, you're working together alone. That's something you should really lock in if you're thinking about doing another meeting. Just this idea of not talking to each other means there's even a bigger variation of ideas here. Okay, we do now have a list of ideas, but now we need to execute on these ideas. We don't want to just say, okay, that's what's happening. We want to execute. We don't, we don't just want to go with, okay, this has the most votes, so we're doing that. We want to see which things are actually practical, which things are feasible, and which things are actually worth doing. To do that, we're going to move on to step seven, where we're going to actually figure out which of these are worth trying out. Okay, we're moving on to step seven. And for step seven, I want to get some magic paper. Just because this paper is a lot more expensive than this paper. <laughs> oh, that's bad. Oh no, I've caused some bad things to happen here. It's all good. Yeah! We got it. All right, so I've got all my ideas on the left here. There'll probably be a lot more in your workshop, but what you can do actually to limit it is just ignore everything that has less than two votes if you have a lot of votes. But I'm just putting three ideas up here, imagining that we have a very small workshop. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna draw a very simple scale Anyone who's worked at any sort of consultancy firm will have seen one of these a million times, but they're super useful. It's called, a, it's called an effort impact scale. And what this scale is gonna help you to do, obviously it's extremely accurate. You can see the extreme accuracy here. What this is gonna help you to do is figure out which ideas are worth trying. Let me explain what the effort impact scale actually means. So everything in the top left here is something that we think would have a high impact on this challenge, meaning we think it would be a very effective solution if we were trying it on this challenge. But we also think it would be pretty easy because it would be low effort. Wow, that's really fading away. It's a beautiful. We think it's low effort. So this is the do now category. So everything that falls into this top left is like do now. That seems like something that's worth trying. Everything over here is still high impact, so we think it could really work, but it might be something that is big enough and complicated enough to be a project. So this is something that's, make it a project. Down here, we're thinking, ah, maybe it's not going to work that well, but it's gonna be easy. So this is something where we say, make it a task. Just put it into the backlog for now. And beautiful handwriting. And here, we're gonna say forget it. Because here is something that we're thinking is low impact, but also high effort. These are things we wanna ignore for now. Okay, 
So wouldn't it be great if we could have all of our ideas on this scale, so therefore we would know exactly what we're going to do as a team. Remember, you're going to have like maybe 10 things here that you need to get on the scale. Now the scale, impact, and imp impact is related to this challenge, okay? Impact means how much impact would this idea have on creating an environment that supports quiet work, and effort is how much effort that would take in your company. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how this works and it's a 10, 10 minute exercise. So it's one of the longest exercises of the entire LDJ just because it causes some discussion and requires some thinking. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is the facilitator and if you're on the table or you're the facilitator, this is what I need you to do is first straight away take the first top voted idea if you can get it off. This idea, first of all, read it out. So this idea is, do not disturb if wearing headphones. Let's make it a rule in our company that if someone's wearing headphones, they're not disturbed. So we don't need to think about how we would do that yet, but just if this were true, that it was a rule in our company that do not disturb if wearing headphones, how much of an impact do you think this would have? So as the facilitator, I put it in the center of the board and I just focus on impact and I say higher or lower impact. What do you think, guys, behind the camera? Higher impact. Higher impact? Around here? Yeah. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm waiting for the team to sort of give it like a, mm, okay, yeah? So this is something new for LDJ 2020. Um, we used to now immediately go to effort, but I wanna show you a quicker way to do this. We're just gonna focus on impact first, okay? So the next thing, Noise cancelling headphones. If we bought noise cancelling headphones for everyone, how much of an impact do you think that would be in the company? I'd say slightly less than the... Um, Here? Yeah. Okay. So, what if we had a whole day uh, dedicated to quietness, quiet Wednesdays? Like higher impact, yeah. Okay. And what if we had designated quiet hours during the day? Okay, so around similar to this. Okay, I'm just gonna put it here for now. Okay, let's look at these in terms of effort. If we were to buy noise canceling headphones for people, how much effort do you think that would be? Not much effort. Not much effort, okay. So we're gonna move it down the scale here. Around here, yeah. just for now. Everything is sort of related to each other so you can move them around. So, and by the way, this is how it should look on your team. It should be very simple and you're just asking your team. You're avoiding big conversations, but you're just asking questions that have very simple answers. Okay, do not disturb if wearing headphones. How, how much effort would it be to implement that into our company as a rule that people follow? Not at all, very much. You don't think so? Well, actually I know so. <laughs> okay, so I, I know it's really cool, so. Well, the thing is, I, I mean, this is actually interesting and this is the conversations you should have. This requires a behavioral change in the company. But, well, so what do you think? Okay, so significant effort. Significant effort? What do you think? Mm. To get people to stick to a rule if you're wearing headphones, you don't contact them. Significant effort. Okay, so quiet Wednesday, so whole day dedicated to not making any noise? I think that would be easier to... Implement than this? Okay. Where do you think it is on the scale? Higher or lower than where it is right now? I see lower. Lower? Yeah. Like here? Yeah. Okay. So, having designated quiet hours during the week. I think that's similar to quiet Wednesdays. I think it's easy so. to train people, but yeah. Okay. So, just a quick example of how this actually works here. So now, at the end of your exercise, you'll have maybe 10 or 11 things on here spread around the entire effort impact scale. But what you can see is how much, basically, which ideas are falling into the quick wins, which ideas are falling into, this could be really great, but it's a project, and which ideas are falling below the line. None of them fell below the line here. Wow, this is so ugly, it's unbelievable. Um, you'll see in a graphic how that actually looks. But you're taking 10 minutes just to get these things onto the effort impact scale and that's it. So that's all you're doing in this step. So we're on to the final step of this LDJ session, step number eight, and this step lasts five minutes. Very, very simple. All you're gonna do now is you're going to take the top, everything that falls into this do now category and you're gonna turn it into an experiment, an actionable experiment. 
a time-boxed actionable experiment that your team can try, that someone on your team is going to be assigned and they can test out doing that thing and see how effective it actually is within the company. So let's take, and, and, and how this is gonna work, you're gonna choose, just for the sake of simplicity, you're gonna choose things that fall into the do now box, but are on the easy side first, right? We're just starting with the easy things. So this happens to be the easiest one first, the buying people noise canceling headphones, but we wanna think of an experiment, an actionable experiment. So what I do as the facilitator and what you're gonna do with your team right now is you're gonna say, okay, so noise canceling headphones, what's a two week experiment that we can try that would help us see if this is actually worth doing or not? What's a two week experiment, okay? And so you're gonna write on here, two week experiment. And then you're gonna write the bullet points of what that experiment uh, is gonna look like and keep it super basic. So we don't wanna buy noise canceling headphones for the entire company. What we're gonna do is we're gonna buy noise canceling headphones for maybe three to five people who need to do quiet work. So you can get people, you know, get people to volunteer who wants to volunteer for this. So actually, let's keep it really simple. So we're buying three sets headphones. We're gonna use them for two weeks. And then those people who volunteered, when you get back as a group together, are going to talk about their experiences using noise canceling headphones and talk about how much it helped solve this problem. So you choose an actual date and you choose the actual people. So on March 29th, back in this room, Dave, Sarah, blah, 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 will come together and talk about their experiences. So that's the experiment for this one. Now, sometimes we will stop there. Sometimes we'll take the easiest one and we'll say, all right, we're just gonna see how that works and we're just gonna see how it affects this and then we'll come back and if that doesn't work, we'll take the next one. Because what can happen is if you're too ambitious, Sometimes you just don't get anything done and you muddy the waters. So if you try to do noise canceling headphones, plus quiet Wednesdays, plus having, a designated, having designated quiet hours, you might actually not be able to control whether or not that worked. But I still create actionable experiments for each of these. So that basically, oh no. So that basically, if this doesn't work, if this experiment doesn't work, we move on to the next one, which is closest to the left in the do now uh, category and try that for two weeks. And that's basically the workshop. That's basically how you go from having a broad set of ideas to an actual actionable experiment that you can execute. We use LDJ every single week at AJ and Smart. If you would walk around the AJ and Smart office, you'll see these things uh, all over the place because people are running this exercise all the time. Whenever we wanna to come together as a team, make decisions, solve problems, come up with ideas, come up with experiments. We use LDJ, we use Lightning Decision Jam just because it's so simple and just because you can run through it without having to think about every single element of it, not having to do an open meeting where everything gets lost. You can just go step by step through it and know that there's going to be an outcome. LDJ is super powerful, companies all over the world use it. Since they found our first YouTube video about this a couple of years ago, people have been replacing their meeting structure, replacing their like open brainstorming, replacing their like innovation workshops with this sort of super structured approach. And LDJ really, you know, it, it's super powerful. There's, it's, it's free, you just use it now because you've seen this video. Um, you can get the download down below, the, the, the ebook of this or whatever you call it. Um, and really you can run it yourself today. There's really no challenge in running this exercise. It's super simple, super powerful. Really hope you loved watching this video. I really hope you enjoy our workshop videos. Do let us know in the comments if you've run this exercise, if you're going to run this exercise, if you found this helpful, thank you so much. We really do appreciate. Uh, make sure you check out AJ and Smart on LinkedIn. Uh, you can check us out, you know, ajsmart.com. We also have a website dedicated just to workshops, which is workshopper.com. So we're all over the place. Tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of free content. 
If you like this video, if it's something that really tickles your fancy, if you love workshops, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the like button and do hit the bell button because we have new videos every week. We have new workshop videos every week. You can take these, you can make them your own and run these for your clients and run these in your companies. And honestly, we believe that workshops are one of the most powerful tools one of the most powerful skills you can have up your sleeve, because if you can help teams work better together with less stress, it's really just a killer career advantage. So make sure you check out this YouTube channel. It's really every week, new videos. Hit the bell, hit the like, leave a comment. It helps us with the algorithm. Thank you so much.